Right, so templates. Now, I haven't looked through these slides ahead of time yet, so uh, we'll see how uh, things go. So, uh, text templates, that's the first part. You use package text slash template, and your stuff's delimited by uh, double curly braces. Um, let's see. So you use template.parse files, you pass it in the uh, path of your file, which is here. Uh, and then you can use template.execute, and it will do stuff. So like right here, you can in this file into TPL, tpl.execute. The writer you're using is uh, state OS standard out, which, cause, uh, which means it prints into the terminal, and he's not passing any data into the, uh, into the template. So if you look at it, when you ran it, it's got the HTML there. So you can put stuff into it, like here you just put curly brace, curly brace, five, curly brace, curly brace, it just puts the five in there. You should never want to do this, I think, don't think. But there's also the dot. Dot's kind of like the dot in Unix, where dot means current directory. Dot here means current data. So the data that's got passed in here, 10, that'll get put in that spot. So in the resulting output, it's a 10. So that means you can do calculations too, 5 times 5. So this would, be, this would be the most common way of using your RESTful API, is you would make a template and, uh, and just pass in data this way. So dot is still the current thing, but you can use the range to basically go over anything between the range and its end. We'll go over uh, each item in an array or a map uh, one at a time. So range dot, the dot here means the entire uh, slice, and the dot here means the current item. One, two, three, four, five, with list item on each side. Um, there are other template systems you may have seen for other places. Ghost templates are very similar. Um, let's see. Uh -huh. You could do range, which has got the constants, and you can also stick an else block on your range, which will be what it shows if there's nothing in the uh, slice or map. Um, you can also pass in an entire struct as your uh, as your data, and then dot refers to the entire struct, and you can use a variable sub variable in there. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. Oh, okay. You can attach a function to, so like here is uh, my custom func. Right here, uh, my custom func got registered as a function that will be executed when this part appears in the template. So tpl.funks, pass it in a template.funk map, which has got keys and values where the key is a string and the value is a function that returns a string. Um, the new function just returns the blank template. It's, and then you can attach funks to it with a func map. Which a func map is just a map of strings to interface empty. Um, so each function has to have a single return value or two return values for the second one is an error. Um, parse files takes in a variadic amount of strings. That'll be how many files it reads. If you only put if you only put in one file, you can use execute. If you put in more than one file, you're going to have to use uh, execute template, which takes in a string and tell, to tell it which which one you want to actually print. Um, your functions you pass into TPL to template the functions can take in arguments. It's like right here, he's got he's creating an uppercase function, which takes in a string, returns a string, and it just calls strings.toupper in it. So here, 
he puts uh, calls the update assumption with the value of title in this struct. And so it prints out all caps. Um, so yeah, here's the uh, downside to text template though. What if your body here, if it's script tag, say, for example, instead of body, it's like someone's username. You really, really don't want to stick that into, like, when someone's searching for usernames and it pops up randomly. So that's why you got HTML template. Exact same code, except you're implementing each HTML slash template instead of text slash template. Everything else is exactly the same. So if you look at how it breaks out here now, though, it escaped all the uh, symbols, like the less than symbol with the ampersand LT column at the semicolon. And thus, this will print as if it's that text in the web browser, but it will text you. If you really, really need to have that HTML still there, you can change its type from string to template.html. Exact same effect. Um, except it acts as if this is meant to be HTML. It's rare that you'll need this, but it is available in case you do. So parse files takes in a single file name and you use execute to execute it. Parse glob will take in a regular expression string and use execute template to choose a specific subfile in there. Um, exercise, hello world, create an HTTP application that returns hello your name using a template. Um, HTTP application returns the currently current URL. Um, or the CSV file using templates and send results to it as HTML. And solutions. So here's the hello world. Here's the URL. Here's the uh, CSV writing with its code. Or is it this code? Okay, yeah, I think this is its code. All right, that's it for that. My goodness, I'm blazing through these slides. He's going to run, we're going to run out of slides, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not actually sure if he's finished this particular one set of slides yet or not. Uh, this looks like well, blank pages. <laughs> All right, so I don't think he's finished these slides yet. So 